Have you ever wondered if there could be life on Mars? This question has intrigued scientists and space enthusiasts alike for generations. Our current understanding paints Mars as a barren, inhospitable planet, seemingly devoid of the essential conditions for life as we know it. Life as we comprehend it hinges on specific conditions. Consider water, for instance. This life-sustaining liquid, which covers over 70% of our home planet, seems scarce on the red planet. Or sunlight, the energy source that fuels photosynthesis in plants, is less intense on Mars due to its distance from the sun. And let's not forget about the atmosphere, a cocktail of gases that supports life on Earth. But Mars' thin atmosphere lacks many of these crucial elements. Yet in the face of these daunting facts, scientists are not deterred. They're exploring the tantalizing possibility of life on Mars, pushing the boundaries of our knowledge and imagination. But what if we could change the conditions on Mars? What if we could plant our own life there? Planting life on Mars is no small task. The red planet presents a host of challenges. Firstly, let's talk about Mars's thin atmosphere. It's about 100 times less dense than Earth's, meaning there's less carbon dioxide for plants to convert into oxygen. This lack of atmospheric pressure also means that any water on the surface would quickly evaporate, making it difficult for plants to stay hydrated. Next up is the extreme temperatures. Mars can swing from a high of 70 degrees Fahrenheit in the daytime to as low as a chilling negative 128 degrees at night. These drastic temperature changes can be tough for plants to withstand, as they need a stable environment to grow and thrive. Speaking of water, it's a scarce resource on Mars. Most of it is frozen in the polar ice caps, and what little is in the soil is saltier than Earth's oceans. This high salinity makes it hard for plants to absorb the water they need to survive. And then there's the solar radiation. Mars' thin atmosphere and lack of a magnetic field means it's exposed to much more harmful solar radiation than Earth. This radiation can damage plant cells and hinder their growth, but the soil itself might be the biggest challenge. Martian soil or regolith contains perchlorates, which are toxic to most forms of life. Even if we could get plants to grow, they'd have to contend with these deadly chemicals. These challenges might seem daunting, but remember, humans have a knack for overcoming obstacles. We've climbed the highest mountains, explored the deepest oceans, and now we're setting our sights on the red planet. But despite these seemingly insurmountable challenges, scientists are not deterred. In fact, they're finding innovative ways to overcome them. Scientists are nothing if not resourceful. They're coming up with some fascinating solutions to the challenges of planning on Mars. First off, let's talk about hydroponics and aeroponics. These are techniques where plants are grown without soil. Instead, they're nurtured with nutrient-rich water or mist. Imagine a greenhouse, but instead of pots of soil, you've got plants hanging in air or floating in water their roots basking in a nourishing mist. This could be a game changer on Mars where the soil is harsh and water scarce. By controlling the environment and the nutrients, we could potentially grow plants more efficiently and with less resources. Next, we've got protective structures, picture domes or even underground facilities that provide a safe and controlled environment for the plants. These structures could shield the plants from harmful radiation, regulate temperature, and maintain an Earth-like atmosphere inside. It's like creating little pockets of Earth on Mars, allowing our plants to thrive in an otherwise hostile environment. And then there's terraforming. Now this is a big one. Terraforming is the hypothetical process of deliberately modifying the atmosphere, temperature, surface topography, or ecology of Mars to be similar to those of Earth to make it habitable for Earth life. This is a long-term goal, and it's a massive undertaking. We're talking about changing the face of an entire planet here. But if successful, it could mean the ability to grow plants and perhaps sustain human life directly on the Martian surface. All of these solutions might seem straight out of a science fiction novel, but make no mistake, these are real possibilities being studied and developed by some of the brightest minds in the world and they're not just about planting on Mars. They could also lead to advancements in agriculture and sustainability right here on Earth. These solutions might sound like science fiction, but they are very much grounded in reality. With these innovative solutions, the future of Mars might be greener than we think. 
Imagine, if you will, a Mars not just of red rock and dust, but of lush green foliage of thriving ecosystems of life. The potential implications of being able to plant on Mars are mind-boggling and stretch far beyond what we might initially imagine. Firstly, consider the possibility of creating a self-sustaining ecosystem. By introducing plant life to Mars, we could potentially set in motion a chain of events that could see Mars develop its own Earth-like biosphere. These plants would not only convert the carbon dioxide-rich Martian atmosphere into oxygen, but also create a habitat for other forms of life. In essence, we would be kick-starting the process of terraforming Mars, turning it from a barren desert into a living, breathing world. Then, there's the matter of providing food for future astronauts. The logistics of space travel are complex, to say the least, especially when it comes to long-duration missions like those required to reach Mars. Having a reliable source of fresh food on Mars would dramatically reduce the amount of supplies that need to be sent from Earth, making these missions far more feasible. But the implications stretch even further. Successfully planting on Mars could pave the way for human colonization. With a self-sustaining ecosystem and a reliable food source, humans could potentially live on Mars indefinitely. This would be a giant leap forward not just in space exploration, but in the history of our species. We would become a multi-planetary species, opening up a whole new frontier for human civilization. And so, the idea of planting on Mars is not just about survival, it's about the future of humanity. By taking these first steps, we're not just reaching out to touch the stars. We're laying the groundwork for a future in which humans are not just visitors in space, but residents. The idea of planting on Mars is not just about survival, it's about the future of humanity. So is there life on Mars? Not yet, but there might be soon. We've just taken a riveting journey through the possibilities of establishing life on Mars, our enigmatic red neighbor. So let's revisit the key points we've explored in this journey. We began by acknowledging the formidable challenges of planting on Mars. We talked about the thin Martian atmosphere, the harsh climate, and the radiation levels that are significantly higher than what we experience on Earth. We considered the lack of liquid water in the soil, which unlike Earth's fertile ground, is filled with toxic chemicals. These challenges are no small feat, but they are not insurmountable. Next, we delved into the innovative solutions scientists are considering to overcome these challenges. We discovered how they're experimenting with plant species that can withstand extreme conditions known as extremophiles, and how they're developing advanced technologies to create artificial environments suitable for plant growth. We also discussed the potential use of bioengineering to create plants specifically designed to thrive in Martian conditions. But perhaps the most exciting part of our discussion was the potential implications of being able to plant on Mars. Imagine the possibilities. The ability to grow plants could pave the way for establishing a sustainable food source, making long-term Martian habitation a reality. It could also lead to the transformation of the Martian environment, a process known as terraforming, which could make the red planet more Earth-like over time. As we wrap up this journey, it's clear that we're on the brink of a new frontier in space exploration. The quest to plant on Mars is not just about survival, it's about the human spirit of exploration and the pursuit of knowledge. It's about pushing the boundaries of what is possible and redefining our place in the universe. The red planet might seem inhospitable now, but with a little bit of ingenuity, we might just be able to turn it green.